Republican leader. I know my good friend, the majority leader, may have been a little busy the last 24 hours. Maybe he missed the news. Um, uh, Reuters says uh, U.S. Senate Republicans back uh, payroll tax cut extension. The Wall Street Journal says GOP set to back payroll tax cut. IPD, IBD says GOP open to payroll tax cut. Uh, U.S. News, uh, Mitch McConnell says Congress will likely extend tax cut one more year. Uh, CBS says GOP working on alternative proposal for payroll tax uh, cut extension. The Washington Post, a majority of Republicans likely to back pay payroll tax extension. And Fox News, Republicans back payroll tax extension. So, Madam President, uh, this is not an issue, uh, not an argument about whether or not we ought to extend the uh, payroll tax uh, cut that was enacted last year for one year. The issue is how do you uh, pay for that, and we have differences of opinion about that. Uh, this week, as we all know, the Senate is debating the extension of a temporary payroll tax cut that the two parties agreed to last year uh, to help those struggling in a bad economy. But before getting into any detail about the various uh, proposals that are being considered for extending this temporary tax cut, I think it's important to establish a couple of things uh, right here at the outset. First, the debate we're having this week is not about whether to extend this temporary relief for millions of working Americans out there who are struggling as a result of the ongoing jobs crisis. It's about whether we should help those who are struggling in a bad economy by push punishing the private sector businesses that the American people are counting on to help turn this economy around. The President and Democrats here in Congress are saying we ought to recoup the revenue we won't get from one group of taxpayers by socking it to another group, a significant number of whom happen to be employers. What this really means is that one way or another, they want the money coming back to Washington so that the President and his allies in Congress can divvy it up how they want, protecting and aiding the politically favored few. And this really sums up the whole story of this president and the economic policies he's promoted over the past few years. Send your money to Washington so the president and his allies in Congress can spend it their way on things like turtle tunnels, uh, tunnels or bailing out politically connected investors at failing solar companies. The Democrats can say they just want some people to pay a little bit more to cover this or that dubious proposal but what they don't tell you is that 80% of the people they want to tax are business owners. In other words, the very people we're counting on to create the jobs that we need in this country. Think about that. The Democrats' response to the jobs crisis we're in right now is to raise taxes on those who create the jobs. And this isn't just counterproductive, it's absolutely absurd. And that brings me to my second point, which is this. The only reason we're talking about <clears throat> extending a temporary cut in the payroll tax right now, the only reason we're even talking about extending unemployment insurance right now is because President Obama's economic policies have failed working Americans. Democrats and liberal pundits are fond of saying that Republicans are rooting against the economy. But it's easy to refute that one. If Republicans wanted the economy to stall, we'd just stand on the sidelines and wave through everything the president and his Democratic allies in Congress proposed. That's what the Democrats did for two years, the first two years of the president's term. And now we're living with the results. Unemployment's still stuck at around 9%. 14 million Americans are looking for work and can't find it. Millions more are underemployed or have given up on finding a job altogether. And here we are, three years into this presidency, still talking about temporary stimulus measures. So Republicans will put aside their misgivings and support this extension, not because we believe, as the president does, that another short-term stimulus will turn this economy around, but because we know it will give some relief to struggling workers out there who continue to need it nearly three years into this presidency. Americans shouldn't have to suffer any more than they already are for the Democrats' failed economic policies. Republicans reject the idea that the way to help people is for the government to write them a check every once in a while or adjust their pay stub 
at a time of our choosing. We think it's a time to get past the idea that government should be the sole arbiter of people's futures and livelihoods. We need to get government out of the business of picking winners and losers. And that's why Republicans think the real answer is broad-based tax reform that clears out the deductions and the loopholes and the special carve-outs for those who are rich enough or politically connected enough to benefit from them. If you're a small business owner, we don't think you should have to have an army of tax lawyers on staff to figure out how to keep your business profitable and your employees on the payroll. If you're an individual, you shouldn't have to hire an accountant to keep from getting ripped off by the IRS. We think Americans are ready for tax reform that makes the system fair for everybody, that levels the playing field so people in small businesses can c compete without having to beg for favors or beg for loopholes. And we're going to keep pressing for it. And part of that is looking beyond these temporary stimulus measures. Let's be very clear about this. The Democrats' quick fix approach has failed. Nearly three years have passed since Democrats passed the mother of all stimulus bills, and we've got 1.3 million fewer jobs in this country than we had when the president signed it into law. And yet they're still at it. Republicans in the House have passed an avalanche of legislation aimed at liberating the private sector and getting the economy growing again. It all dies at the Senate door. Democrats just aren't interested. With Democrats in control of two-thirds of the government in Washington, all we get is more temporary stimulus and calls to raise taxes on the very people we're counting on to jolt this economy back to life. And that's why we're standing here three years into this administration <clears throat> still talking about temporary stimulus measures paid for by permanent tax hikes. Temporary stimulus measures paid for by permanent tax hikes. Democrats don't just seem interested in doing anything that will lead to economic growth. They're stuck on stimulus. They're stuck on government. They're stuck on economic policies that have already failed. <clears throat> so we're not arguing against extending the payroll tax cut. We just think it shouldn't be punishing job creators to pay for it. And we think that if this kind of temporary relief engineered at some lawmaker's whim is the sum and substance of Democrats' plan for getting this economy going again, we're really in trouble. The American people don't want a temporary allowance from Democrats here in Washington. They want us to get out of the way, lift the burdens to growth so they can get this economy going. <clears throat> That's why Republicans are proposing a very different approach to paying for this extension. We can maintain this tax relief without raising taxes on job creators. If past experience shows us anything, it's that Washington will only spend every dime it gets and then some anyway. We need to find a solution that doesn't give more power to Washington. We'll never get this economy going again or help people create the wealth and jobs that America needs if we continue to allow Washington to dictate all the rules of the game when it comes to our economy. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the real question in this debate isn't whether lawmakers in Washington should or shouldn't extend some temporary stimulus, but whether the American people should continue to allow Washington to have so much power over their lives. That's what this debate is really about.